Hey Mariners, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving deep into a rule that could literally save your ship and your life. Rule 7, all about determining the risk of collision. Think of it as your seafaring sixth sense, but way more reliable. So, grab your coffee and let's get into it. Rule 7, Part A, is crystal clear. Every vessel shall use all available means appropriate to the prevailing circumstances and conditions to determine if risk of collision exists. The key phrase here is, all available means. This isn't just about a quick glance out the window. We're talking the full suite, a sharp visual lookout, listening for sound signals, and mastering your electronic toolkit, radar, ARPA, AIS, and VHF. VHF, right? You might have heard in maritime school that using VHF for collision avoidance is a bad idea. That was true before 2002, when AIS became a mandatory for ships on international voyages. Back then, identification another ship was tough. But now, with AIS, it's easy. Believe it or not, VHF is super popular for avoiding collisions. When you call another ship, at least you know the officer on watch isn't dozing off or buried in paperwork. You've got their attention, which is a big deal. If there's even a little doubt about a potential collision, the rule says you must assume the risk exists. No ifs, ands, or buts. Better safe than sorry is the law of the sea. Now let's talk gadgets. Part B says if you've got radar, you better use it properly. This isn't just for seeing what's right in front of you. You need to be doing long-range scanning to get that crucial early warning. Spotting a vessel 12 miles away gives you a lot more time to think and act than spotting it at 3 miles. As per Rule 7, you also need to be plotting those targets or using an equivalent systematic observation. What's a systematic equivalent? Your best friend, ARPA. ARPA does the heavy lifting, giving you the CPA, closest point of approach, and TCPA, time to closest point of approach, automatically. So don't just have it on, actively use it to track everything that moves. And remember, ARPA needs at least six minutes to accurately calculate CPA and TCPA. Though ARPA shows CPA and TCPA seconds after acquiring targets, first six minutes this data is not accurate enough. Next up, part C, and this one is a huge one. Assumptions shall not be made on the basis of scanty information, especially scanty radar information. This is the rule that fights complacency. You can't just take one piece of data and run with it. Imagine your radar shows a risk of collision, but your visual bearing seems to be changing. What do you do? You don't guess. You cross-check everything. You verify that both of your radar, X-band and S-band, your visual bearings and your AIS are all telling you the same story. If one of them is singing a different tune, it's time to double-check all your instruments and observations. Trust, but verify. Your life and your crew's lives depend on that diligence. Okay, let's get to the nitty-gritty of determining that risk, which is part D. Subparagraph I gives us the classic sign, risk exists if the compass bearing of an approaching vessel does not appreciably change. This is the famous constant bearing decreasing range scenario. But here's a critical point many people miss. A steady bearing alone is not enough. A vessel on the same course and speed ahead of you will have a constant bearing, but you're not going to collide. The magic combination, the real red flag, is a steady bearing plus a shortening distance. When both of those things are happening, alarm bells should be ringing loud and clear. That's your undeniable signal to take action. Finally, let's talk about the exceptions and a super useful life hack in Part D. Subparagraph it warns that risk can sometimes exist even with an appreciable bearing change. When does this happen? Usually when you're dealing with something massive, like a super container ship or a tugboat with a long tow, or when you're already uncomfortably close. Here's a pro tip. When taking visual bearings, always use the same fixed point on the other vessel. Pick the funnel, the forward mast, or the bridge wing. Something that won't change. Now for the life hack. 
If a massive 400-meter-long or 0.21-mile-long ship is crossing your bow, don't take a bearing on her bow. Take your bearings on her stern or aft mast. You know why? Because you'll be getting super close to her back end, and 0.21 miles is a lot, probably it much longer than your own ship and almost equal to CPA. Conversely, if she's crossing your stern, take bearings on her bow or forward mast. This little trick gives you a much more accurate picture of the real CPA and keeps you out of trouble. And that's a wrap on Rule 7. It's not just a guideline. It's a mindset of constant vigilance and smart use of your tools. Master this and you'll be a safer, more professional mariner. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this helpful, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the coal regs. Stay safe out there and see you in the next video.